All right, what's up everybody? I'm Dustin Southworth. Uh, today I wanted to show off my newest project thing I've been working on. Uh, so I wanted to get into home automation for a while. Uh, the smart home, smart light bulbs, all that stuff. Um, I'm finally starting to get into the first part of it, uh, that being the smart light bulbs. And I've got them set up in my room. The uh, overhead lights and the uh, my lamp behind me are all Philips Hue light bulbs. So I've got the Philips Hue app open right now. I'm gonna just control those. I can do the overhead lamp, the the lamp behind me. I can make it an ominous red if I do it right. <laughs> ominous red behind me. I've also got a few scenes set up so I can do everything goes bright I can dim it down, got my gaming mode, and just off, but we don't want them off right now. <laughs> um, I've also got OpenHab, which is a open source project, and I've got that set up on a Raspberry Pi, and I can control it, several things, basically the same things, but uh, I've got a custom um, web app set up so I can, uh, for my phone, and I've also got a custom one set up for my tablet and one on the PC if, just in case I need to control it with that. So I'll go ahead and show you what the app, apps look like and we can go from there. Okay, first I want to show you what the uh, that Q app looks like. So this is these are the two groups that I have set up. Like I said, they have the, uh, well, my room is the overhead and then uh, bed lamp is the one on my nightstand. And I can individually control those. I can scroll that down, back up, same with the lamp. And then if I go into the lamp, I can actually, here's where I can control the coloring of it. I can make it, I can cycle through all the different uh, 16 million RGB lights or uh, colors, sorry, colors. And then in this one, I can change the temperature of the lamp specifically. I uh, go with a warm or a daylight or right in the middle. Um, I've also got one, one bulb up in the overhead that can also do that. It's a very specific one, but, uh, but yeah. So that's the Hue app. And what I can do with it. Okay, now I'm going to show the uh, the panel for the open hab. Uh, this is what it looks like. This is how I have it set up. I've got switches, so I can just it's just an on or off switch uh, for everything or individuals. Um, and then I've got sliders, so I can up and down. I've also got a temp for temperature control for the those two lights that I was talking about that have uh, the ability to change their color temperature. Uh, it's normally set at 61 when it's on the bright mode, so I'll put it right back there, or 62 I guess. <laughs> Can't. Uh, I've got a color picker set up. It's a little hard to to do on the uh, on the app just because it's so such a small, but it does kind of give me more granular control a little bit of the different colors. Um, but yeah, so that's the that's what my open hab one looks like. Now I want to show off um, what the web panel on my computer looks like and the behind the scenes of the uh, the open hab configuration and, and what that kind of looks like. The the web portion of it. The, I mean, there are a bunch of different files and stuff you can go to if you go actually go. If I went onto my Raspberry Pi and started messing with that there are config files and all that but this is just what the web interface looks like for OpenHab. Uh, so this is how I have it set up. I've got uh, my light switches, I've got my all light switch, this is turn on everything. Uh, overhead that's just my my fan and then my lamp which is my on my nightstand on the side and these wheels will um, go up to 100% and they'll, this one will turn everything on this just turns on my fan, the, the bottom left, the bottom right will turn on my lamp and control how bright that is. So if I go ahead and turn on everything, 
this one updates the fastest, of course, because I hit the turn on everything button. Uh, it goes to the last known percentage that you had it set at. Uh, sometimes they take a little bit to update exactly what percentage it's set at. As you can see there, it's, it's updating. Uh, and I can change that just by clicking and then letting depressing the click and it'll update and everything will update with it um, eventually some like I said sometimes it's a little slow but uh, and right now so this is this controls my um, my lamp the, the the color on my lamp because it's one of the the LED uh, color ambience lamps uh, whatever it's called I can't remember exactly what the name of it is but anyway this controls the color of that and since it's set at 0% here, which is the color temperature, um, it is showing as this. But if I go ahead and update that to, I don't know why, but I like 61% seems to be like, it's a little more on the yellow side, um, that, that soft white. And it tends to blend in better with the, the overhead lights. So I tend to do that. So yeah, as you see, that 61% changed the the LED color, so you can see it update um, when it does eventually show. And then I can, I mean, I can individually shut that off, so now the lamp's off, and then I can hit overhead lights, so now everything is off, everything updated, and I'm going to show you kind of the behind the scenes of that. So, um, go over here to the, <clears throat> this is the open hab, the paper UIs and I'm under control right now so it's showing me all of the devices and information that I can pull in so I've got my three overhead lights here on the left side uh, the white lamp the ambience lamp and the white the other white lamp uh, so those are my overhead lights over here on the right side is the hue color lamp and here I can I can also control it from this panel but I tend not to um, so I can control the color and the color temperature and everything, the saturation if I want. Uh, turn them on and on and off uh, from this panel. I've also got my Chromecast uh, pulling in local time and weather information. So I've got that all set up. So to to get this these devices on here, all of these um, the controls that I have, I had to go to add-ons. And here's where you're going to add the bindings that you want. So you, you go through here, you find your device. So I've got Chromecast set here. Uh, so if I wanted to, I've got Hue binding, Kodi, I've got set up, um, and everything. So if I wanted to add something, if I wanted to add, like, say, the Harmony Hub uh, binding, I would just click Install. And once that's fully installed, sometimes you have to just jump to a different page and it'll show up. It, sometimes it takes forever. That'll show up here in the inbox. So right now my inbox is empty because I've got everything added already, but it would automatically show up. Uh, but if I had to, if I had to change some settings or whatever, and I needed to add it back in there, I could just go here. I could find whatever binding that is. So I could click on Chromecast, and it would aut automatically search again for any Chromecast. So if I if I bought a new Chromecast, I would just go to this and and have it search, and it would find that new Chromecast and I'd be able to add it in. So once I've added it from the inbox, then it goes into configuration and goes into things. So this is all the devices. It's, it kind of looks the same as control, or has the same devices as control, but it, it's showing up as a list. Uh, so these are all the things that I can add, or all the items that I have. But then you have to create an item to, to go with those, those things. So what I have here is, so brightness is set, and it's set on all of my lights. So all of my lights have brightness. That's where that, that switch was from. So that all light switch is brightness. And then this, this knob right here is also brightness. And I can contr control it individually. But then if I want to break it down, like I do have, I want my lamp brightness. That's a separate thing. And I just have it set to that one, that color lamp. Um, so it's just in the lamp brightness and just that color lamp is set for that. And then the overhead lights, that's set for the the three lights that I had set up. Those uh, And those are the overhead or fan lights. So that's kind of how you break it down, how you, you <clears throat> put, a, put different things into different groups. And you can, you can put whatever you want in the different groups as long as it kind of has a similar control. So that's how I have that set up. 
and I just now I kind of want to just take a little minute to to kind of talk about my experience with the with the lights and everything um what I've found what I kind of wish they had done or what I what I wish I would have bought with it so I've kind of found that I very much have gotten into a habit I mean you do with with light switches I tend to turn them on and off all the time and like as I'm going in and out of rooms and that's something I've had to break myself of with in my in my room because I don't have a physical switch I didn't buy the the dimmer switch that comes with Philips Hue lights I mean it's a separate package uh, but that's something I probably should have bought just to kind of get myself in the habit or 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 help me break out of the habit because I tend to to do it every once in a while and I'll I'll hit this button here for overhead lights and I'll I'm like what the heck why isn't it turning on and then I realize oh my I flipped the light switch off so that's why my lights aren't turning on um but like I said there is a a dimmer switch that you can buy that comes with the or it comes with a Philips Hue white light so I could have got that, and then I would have had a, a physical switch. A um, couple other things. Ah, I was trying to remember what. Um, you do have to have a, with the Philips Hue lights, it does come with a hub, or, or one of the packages does come with a hub, and that is probably one of the best ways to do it. Um, there's also a Smart Things hub that I've been looking into. It's made by Samsung, and I guess it does pull in all this information, so I kind of do your research beforehand i i didn't realize that was av available or out there that would have been a central hub and it would have connected a whole bunch of different devices and then something i've been reading and, and looking at a lot of video other videos um <clears throat> these people who <laughs> apparently do have a lot of money or or have planned ahead when they're building their houses or whatever to connect these devices they find if they have hundreds of devices of course it's not going to run as well or not going to be updated as as easily or i mean their, their controls are slower when you have that many devices so kind of think about that i mean you you don't need hundreds and hundreds of devices in your house i mean it's nice to have the lights and stuff and and some of the other things that you can control but you really don't have to have it all built into these smart automation things and i see a lot of people talking about like turning on their lights when they get home or tor turning on their lights at a certain time uh and i wanted to do that but i don't always get up at the same time so it's kind of hard to set that that automation thing where it, it'll turn on your lights at a certain time and turn off your lights at a certain time i just i i like to have the control myself so again that would go back to it'd be nice if i had that physical button and you do and another thing you have to think about is uh where to get these things because in my town the small town that i'm in well the small town that i'm close to doesn't carry any they don't carry any phillips hue lights so i have to go to another town half an hour away to go to best buy to get phillips hue lights if i want to continue with that line so you kind of got to think about what brand you want to go with, what you, brand you want to stick with, where you can get it, how easy it is to get. If, you, if you're willing to wait a couple days to get them on Amazon, that's fine. But uh, I do have to think about that kind of stuff. I mean, I went to our, our local, um, I, not local, but it, it is a franchise, but a uh, hardware store. And they had a totally different brand or a couple different brands that I could have gone with. And I probably still could integrate those smart light bulbs uh with my system because i have open hab that would probably allow me to control those but uh yeah that's just something you got to think about with this uh with these the home automation and the smart light bulbs and all that because different uh different stores will carry different brands and you have to definitely plan out and think about what you're going to want in the future and what you might want to add to your system and if you want to go with Wemo light switches so you can just control the device itself instead of the light bulbs themselves or if you want to go with the individual light bulbs and you can control everything but then you have to sit there and set it up and set them in, up into groups and scenes and and rooms um, so yeah that's all just something you need to think about before you go and buy these things 
uh, that I found. And like I said, my biggest complaint that I not mad at myself about, but I I do wish I would have thought about more was getting that physical switch because, like I said, it's kind of an ingrained habit to just flip off the switch when you're done uh, in that room. Uh, at least for me, that's a very something I've noticed about myself that I tend to flip the switch off and then I wonder why I can't turn on my lights with the this panel. So just something to think about. And so that's all everything I wanted to show you guys about my open hab setup and my uh, Philips Hue lights and everything. So I will talk to you later.